Uh, but I wanted to start with something kind of funny this this morning. Uh, I read it several months ago, and I saved it, and it just kind of I remember it this week. Um, how many of you ever get like messed up in your prayers, and you kind of tongue tie yourself? And uh, not that it's a wrong thing, but you pray something that's about Jesus, but you're talking about God the Father, right? And like you say, uh, Jesus, thank you for creating me, right? When it was like God the Father that did that. Or you say, God, thank you for dying on the cross for me, even though it was Jesus, God in flesh, but it was Jesus, right? I mean, how many ever do that? Like, I, I, I do that, and I'm sure we all do that. And I found a site, a little thing called Accidental Worship Heresies. Where you're saying the complete wrong thing, it's not theological at all, but it just comes out that way because our brains mess up. So, I just found a few that I thought uh, would be kind of cool. Like, uh, for example, Father, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Right? It was the Father, it was the Son. Right? Or, or saying, Jesus, thank you for staying in that grave. Right? But he didn't. He didn't stay in the grave. Right? You get, you get what I'm saying? All right. Here we go. Uh, these are all real ones that people have actually done. Uh, under the hashtag worship heresy. So you can look it up. So misquoted. Someone got up and misquoted Colossians 3.16. And said psalms, hymns, and spiritual thongs. <laughs> now, not psalms. It's supposed to be spiritual psalms. They said thongs. Right? And that was in the middle of one of their best friend's weddings. <laughs> and then, then, all right, here's, a, here's a good one. Uh, this one might be a little hardcore for some of you. But during the song, How Great Is Our God. One person saying he craps himself with light. He, he mixed the words racks and crowns together and it came out wrong. Um, we sing uh, so the song Hosanna. See one more said, uh, they said, I see a generation rising up to take their place with selfish faith. It's supposed to be selfless. They did selfish faith. Uh, or you've heard the Casting Crown song? Not because of what you've done, but because of who I am. <laughs> Which is not, not right at all. Um, I'd rather have silver than Jesus or gold. <laughs> wrong, wrong way. I uh, like this one. Someone said they picked out soft music for the corporate prayer time that they later found out was the theme music to The Exorcist. <laughs> Whoopsie. They think might have lost their job. I'll skip that one. Um, I love this one. Uh, you know the song, How He Loves? Right? Someone got up and sang... He is jealous for me. <laughs> Floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. This Muhammad Ali did not write that. Um, let's see. Uh, mixed up the lyrics to the word of, word of God speak song and said, The last thing I need is to be with you. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus, you're in the last on my list. Uh, one of my favorite songs. Uh, I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, the Cornerstone song, uh, it, it says, In every high and stormy gale, my, an my anchor holds within the veil. They said, my anchor holds within the whale. There's a whale holding it. Um, someone prayed this. God, that you would decrease so that I may increase. That's backwards. Uh, I love this one. And this, this someone actually heard this during a prayer. They said, Lord, we thank you that Jesus set a wonderful example for us while being a great American. <laughs> but that will sink in a minute. Um, let's see here. Someone was, the worship leader was priming the church, getting them ready for the course to, or the pre-course to the God of this city song. And where it says, there is no one like our God. And he emphatically yelled out, there is no God. And he ran out of time. So he just said, there is no God. All right. And I just, that was left out there. Uh, this one guy prayed. He was praying for someone that God would give this guy. And I can't say it without you getting the joke. But he prayed that God would give him AIDS. A-I-D-E-S. He was praying for help. And he said, God, give this man AIDS. And he said, no one catches the E in that word when you pray it. Um, last one. Going back to Hosanna the Highest, this guy said he's a worship leader. And he said he caught himself singing banana, banana in the highest for some reason. So I must be hungry this morning. So just thought those were funny. Hashtag worship heresy. So, uh, 
Now these guys will be singing these lyrics in the song as we sing them. They'll be singing, and then it'll be all my fault, right? Um, praise the Lord. I want you to turn with me to the book of Romans. And let me just uh, kind of tell you what I wanted to share this morning. And I, like I said, I kind of wanted to I wanted to kind of start Christmas messages this morning and uh, change my mind. And as I was praying, I just was asking God um, for more than just a good sermon or message. Uh, I want. Like my whole job is to help lead you. And my, my question this, this week was just, God, how can I help them the most? Not that you're, like you're weak or whatever, that you can't handle it, but just, if I want to do this, I want to be able to help you, right? Anyone agree with that? Like, I don't want you to, I mean, I do kind of want it in my flesh, but I don't want you walking out of here saying, boy, those were good three points. And then Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, you have no help and benefit from it. I really want you to walk out saying, man, that really, that inspired me. That I, I, I want to, I'm ready to walk through a brick building right now in my faith. You know what I mean? I want to help you the most. And it's in that, it's the time of year, you know, we're probably already all, like it's all around us where it's Christmas and it's all about the consumerism and it's all about gifts and you're already picking names and spending limits and you're like how am i going to afford all this and at least that's what it's like on my end and and it's just it gets that gets like and i'll be talking about that a little bit over the next couple of weeks but i was just I, I wanted to be able to help you the most and i just wanted to how can i help you the most right and this is kind of what i felt uh, because as I read these scriptures over the last couple weeks, uh, I've been reading through the book of Romans. And let me encourage you to do that. Right? And you, I don't know what kind of Bible translation you like. You're, you're free to like anyone that you like. And, but I would encourage you sometime to, to walk through the, the Romans book and read it in the New Living Translation. Uh, it is an extreme eye-opener, at least it was to me. I've read it for years, and just reading through it, page after page, you know, day after day, man, it's just so encouraging for, for you to understand what your faith is, and really that it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> that it's just God picked us, and He chose you, and He just grafted you in His mind, and there was no reason other than grace and mercy. And I just encourage you to read it. And uh, so I wanted to hit in um, Romans chapter 12. We're going to start there. Just verses 1 and 2. I think that's it. You've heard this verse before, but I'm going to ask you to put it in New Living Translation if you don't care, Aaron. Uh, just, just for the sake of today. Everyone there? Amen. And so, dear brothers and sisters, so he's obviously talking to the believers, right? He says, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect. Isn't that beautiful? I really feel like reading that. I don't, even have, I, don't have to, I don't have to explain it anymore. You know, I just, all right, God bless you. You'll be dismissed. Yeah. And if that, if that, those two verses just went right down here and sunk in, then I, I really believe that will help you. And 
This is why we need God's way of thinking over our way of thinking. Right? Because our way of thinking says, I want to do what I want. Right? I want to get what I want. I want to do what I want. That's just our way of thinking. And, and that's in everything. Right? We want our football teams to win. We don't care about anyone else. Right? We want ours. And we want, uh, when I eat, I want to eat what I want to eat. Don't, I don't want what they want. I want what I want. And it's just, when I wear something, I want to wear what I want to wear. And I remember one time, and I'm about to do for another one, I asked my wife, I said, can you help me cut my hair? I was having trouble. I, I cut my own hair for those of you who, like, all oh, that explains it. <laughs> That's why it's always messy. It looks bad. You know, I cut my own hair just the same for 15 bucks a month or whatever. 30 bucks a month for those who get your hair cut two times a month. I just sacrifice to say my hair can look bad because there's not much I can do with it anyway. It's just like a mop, a wig. That I just, it don't move, right? So it just, and you, you guys thought I planned the messy look, didn't you? No, it just happens. It just happens on its own. I'm way off subject, but it's been years, I think, since a brush has ran through its, my hair. And just, I, I fixed my hair with water and my hands, and that's it. And I'm like, okay, that explains it. I cut my own hair, so now you know. Uh, feels good just getting that off my chest. So now I'm like, uh, I asked her, I said, can you help me cut my hair? And she was trying to help me, and uh, she had an idea of how she wanted it to look. And I had an idea of how I wanted it to look, and they ended up not being the same. And I asked her, and she said, okay, and then, you know, I, I actually, this was, I don't know, a year or so ago, and I had actually let my hair grow a little bit long, which is hard for me, and she's like, well, I'm going to help you, so she helps me, and then she had an idea of how she wanted it to do, and she wanted it to look all contemporary and cool, and, you know, have the long hair up here, and shave it all up here, you know, with the hard line, everyone's seen them haircuts, and she wanted, that's how she wanted it to be. And she starts doing that to me while I'm not looking in the mirror, right? And when she's done, I turn around and look in the mirror, and I'm like, what did she do to me? <laughs> and so I grab the clippers, and I just go, and I just like that. And I'm like, I'll just start over, just cut my hair, and I'm upset, and I just, just shave it all off to very short hair. And of course, then she was upset, uh, but I was like, that is... That's just not what I want, all right? So that's where I was going with all that. Man, I just took the long way around that one, didn't I? <laughs> uh, but we, that's just our human nature, right? Like, and, and we, we find ourselves in that trap, like, that just, uh, Wednesday, it was rainy, and it was cold. Uh, I, I, work needed to be done on our roof, and I was like, I just don't want to get out and get in it today because it's just, I don't want to. And I did it. I was just like, you know, I stayed lazy. And it was like 2 o'clock before my kids could drag me outside. And then, then we played outside. I still did no work. And I was like, I'm just, you know, I was just spending time with my girls. Jumping on the trampoline. And, and just, you know, then, then Thursday, it was nothing but sitting and eating. And Friday, I was like, I don't want to do anything now. Because now I've just gotten in the habit of doing nothing. And then I was just like, I don't, you know. And then we find ourselves in that track day after day after day. If you don't read your Bible one day, guess what? You don't want to the next day. And he's like, well, I just don't want to. I don't, it, 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 and if you don't spend time with God after a week, then you just don't want to. Because you're afraid you're going to come to him and he's going to strike you with a lightning bolt. <laughs> Have you ever feel that fear? Like, you don't spend time with God for a while, and then you're like, man, I just need to get along with God. And you know, I'm a pastor, so I have to. So somehow i got to come up with a sermon. If I don't spend time with him for a day or two, I'm like, oh man, I, hate, I just hate to walk back in his throne. And, and I'm just afraid to face him again. And every time we just wait there with grace and mercy and love, and it's just, we, we come into this state. Which is how we get in the shape that we're in when we're, when we're simple, is that we do what we want to. Right? And the world... Who doesn't have Christ yet, they have every right to do that. What, what the church usually does is don't live that way. And, and they're, they're sinners. They don't even know Christ yet. You try to tell them how to live for Christ makes no sense to them. But, in this scripture, when, it, when you find out God's like, 
How am I going to I know I'm going to say this the right way? We find out that the best way to live is not our way at all. Right? And I feel like the best way that I can help you is for you to understand when you give your body to God as a living sacrifice, then that is the best way to live. So how is that possible? I don't even know except that God put it in order that way. God put that desire in us, right? That, I mean, he, he, he just formed the, and I'm not going on a lot of tangents today, just like scriptures and points. I just want to kind of drive this home, is that he put the, he put the world in order, right? And he spoke the sun, and you do that, and the moon do that, and all the plants do that, and oxygen does that, and plants do that, and they all do it. Never fail. And then when I tell you, then, I, then when I tell you, trust God, you sacrifice your life for Him, and you'll find joy like you never found before, and then all of a sudden something rises up and says, I just don't want to do it that way. And here's the problem with that, is that we want to take our life and add God to it. And that didn't work. It's like me and my wife and I love her, but yet I want to add another woman on the side to it. That don't work. Right? Ask my wife. She threatens me monthly. She's <laughs> like, just so you don't forget. <laughs> and it, it I, I want to, and it's so hard to even make this sound good, but when you say, my life is no longer mine. I died with Christ, and now the life that I live is His. Right? You will experience life like you were intended to experience it. Okay? Does that mean you get to do nothing you like? No, I'm not saying that. Right? I still, I still get to do things that I like. But I have to be careful that those things don't take over the things that I should do. Right? Like... That if I if I would rather uh, if I would rather get up and watch TV all morning rather than spend time with God, then that then that becomes a problem. Okay. All right, you ready? Um, so it, let me say it this way. Now let me use a quote by Rick Warren, long old time quote, and he says, "You were made by God and for God, and until you understand that." Life will never make sense. Does that make sense? So, if, like, God formed you from the innermost being, and He beautifully, wonderfully handcrafted you. There's a song, child song that I like that says, We were knitted together like a cable knit sweater. So, it's like He was just crafting you like He wanted to, putting everything He wanted to put in you, just the way He wanted you to be. And He, he made you that way. And he put that God-shaped hole inside each and every one of us. That without it, we don't know life. We know existence. We don't know life. Uh, let me turn here. And I'm almost done. I promise you. Uh, turn to Romans 15. Let me explain it just a little further. Just with scripture. Can I do that? Romans 15. We're just going to kind of walk through the whole chapter very quickly, very briefly. I read this this week, honestly. Early this week I read Romans 15. And, man, I just I, I just started writing. And I was like, man, no. I mean, I was just, I, honestly, I was just writing this scripture out. And I was like, man, no. Just, if I want to experience life, this is how you do it. Ready? Uh, Romans 15, just start in verse 1. Here we go. Ready? We who are strong must be considerate of those who are sensitive about things like this. Look here. We must not just please ourselves. And that's not an amen in scripture where everyone's like, amen. All right, but then if you want to experience life the way God intended, this is what Paul says. We must not just please ourselves. All right, next verse. Now, he's not saying you can't. Right? He says, must not just 
please ourselves. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. God is saying, Paul is saying, through the Holy Spirit, if you want to experience life, you have to do it not just worrying about yourself, but helping others. Help them do what's right. Build them up. Life is meant to live together. Amen? Listen to me. There are, I, I don't know, say this, I mean, I don't know, I'm a pastor, so sometimes people have different expectations of me, and I'm fine with that. I have sometimes a higher standard than a lot of people. But there are still days when I need someone to keep me from doing something that my flesh wants to do that I shouldn't do. That I need someone to grab me by the collar and say, don't you dare do that. I need someone, and not just anyone, but I need someone to say, you know, someone help me. Now, I'm not, I'm not a, we're not a big time church here or nothing, but I promise you, if I would go out and do something and get caught, they would put me in the paper. Local pastor does this, gets caught. And I need someone to keep me out of the paper sometimes. Right? I, I would rather live in non-existence, no one knowing me, than people knowing me for the wrong reason. So you see, he was a sham. Everything he did was a, all was just because of this one mistake. Because I am liable, I am able to fall. And sometimes, very small times, some opportune times, I need someone to say, don't you dare, brother, touch that. And that's what Paul's saying. We can't just worry about ourselves. Because that's sometimes what we want to do. My, my, listen, my whole, just part, my, my introvert nature is to move to the hills and, and, and of Alaska where no one want to visit me. And just get a cabin and just me and my family and none of them bother me. And I just, it's just all over us me. And Paul says, God says, that's not how I want it to be. I want you to live in town where you got neighbors that aggravate you and take your parking spot and 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 smoke weed two doors down. And I, I just want people around you to aggravate you. I don't know why, but so you just help me help. All right? I got to hurry. I'm, like, I'm still in verse two. Uh, go back to verse 2. You know, uh, remember I was. We should help others do what is right and build them up in the Lord. Verse 3. For even Christ didn't leave to plead, live to please himself. All right? If that's not a worthy enough, if that's not the best example, Christ came just to serve. Even Christ didn't live to please himself. All right? Uh, go ahead and skip on down to verse 6 for me, if you wouldn't mind. Look here. Then he says... And this, the verses before this just kind of set this up for time. Then all of you, look at here, can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so when you help one another do what's right, then you can join together, one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. I thought it was kind of odd. That he says, join together first, and then accept each other second. It's kind of like family, right? You don't get to pick the family. If you're born in, eventually you just got to learn to accept them. That's how we are. Right? We're brothers and sisters, and we join together. We're all in the same vine, and we just got to learn to accept each other and love each other. And when we do that, God will be given more. I'm almost done. First, go down to verse 13. Paul says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. And he simply says, this goes back to my previous thought, my, my first thought is that we have to, and I don't mean like it's a legal thing, but in order to live the way I've often thought, let me just be total honest with you this morning. Can I do that? I know this is different than usual. Let me be totally honest with you. Is that I've often thought, God, 
I try to do everything I can and strive, and sometimes I still don't feel the joy that I see that the Bible says I'm supposed to have. Right? Still, I just still don't feel the joy, still don't know the peace all the time that the Bible says I should have it. And, and he says, you'll know it when you just trust in him. And, 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 look, and look at my words. When you will say, I don't want to do things the way I want them. I want to do the things that God wants me to more than anything else. And when you say that, there's joy and peace there. Right? When you're, when you're willing to say, I don't care what I get for Christmas. I don't care if I have the money to get things for people for Christmas. Because I know that's not the reason for the season at all. And when you understand that you don't have to have this, that you don't have to have a car, that you don't have to have certain things to make you happy. When you understand, all i got to do is trust in Jesus. Peace and joy. Show up. Right? People in third world countries that serve Christ, they are the happiest people you'll ever experience. They have nothing but Jesus. And then they have everything. I'll go on. Right? You'll, you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Next verse. I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, let me give you some good news, that you are full of goodness. You know these things so well that you can teach others all about them. Now I'll close here. Down to verse 17. Look, up, look, look here at what Paul says. He says, I have reason to be enthusiastic about all Christ Jesus has done through me in my service to God. Yet, I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me, bringing the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I worked among them. So Paul says, listen, I don't have any reason to boast, I'm just, but I am so excited that I get to take part in God's story. Right? He says, the only thing I have to boast about is the fact that God worked through me to help others, to build them up so that they will live right. That we'll join together. That we'll accept each other. Right? It's, just, it's just tying everything together. Saying when you do this. When you put God's way above your way. Man. It's unlike anything else. And my last verse. Jay, verse 20. He says. My ambition. Has always been to preach the good news. Where the name of Christ. Has never been heard. Rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. Paul's whole goal was like, God, I want to reach the loss with the message of Christ. And he knew that that was where he found his peace and joy. Let me say it to you this way. He realized that once he put himself aside, and Paul said, God, I just want to do what you want me to do. I want you to live through me. His whole goal was just to preach the lost. Right? He said, I, where, where no one's ever heard the gospel before, I want to take it to them. And that's why I wanted, to, wanted you all to know the next couple weeks. I want you to partake in this opportunity and say, I want to reach the lost. Someone that's never been to our church, someone that's never been saved, someone that is just, that I don't want you to go out and get someone from another church. That's not what we're about. Right? I want you to go and find people and say, God, back to Romans chapter 12. I lay my life down as a sacrifice so that you can work through me. Right? And I know it's awkward. And I know your lost family members and friends, they don't want to hear it. But they need to hear it. 
Would you back and close your eyes with me? Father, I pray right now that you will take the scriptures, take the words that I've spoken, and simply do the work in our hearts right now. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit breaks down walls, breaks down things in our hearts, breaks down things in our mind, where our mind will say, that's just not how I want to live my life. It's just not, there's no joy there, there's no peace there. I pray, God, that you help break those things. You transform us by the renewing of our minds. Change the way we think. So that, Lord, you will be first. You will be supreme in our life. And I pray, God, that you just begin to do that work inside of each and every one of us right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <coughs> there are many. Let me be honest with you. This was supposed to be like the last 10 minutes of my message today. I had a whole other stuff that I was going to talk about first. I overprepared. And I, I just... Some of you know this. Some of you know this and, and could help me by, by amening me and by, by knowing, like, hey, every time that I've laid my life down for the purpose of Christ, I never regret it. How many of would say that? Every time. Now, I'm sure each and every one of us also could say, there have also been times when Christ wanted me to do something for Him, and I chose myself instead, and I'm sure we all regret it. We didn't find no joy in it. Right? It's like when you say, yeah, I can handle two full plates of Thanksgiving, and you do it, and you regret it. Right? Because your stomach just ain't used to that. Unless you prime yourself like I do. And, and you just, if you want it, like you, your eyes say you want it and you can handle it. But there's something inside that says, I can't handle that. Right? The old expression that your eyes are bigger than your stomach. We do that same thing in the flesh in our life. That we want something and we just we can't handle it. It's not good for us. And all I'm asking is that you will turn to God and say, Okay, God, I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to give it a shot. And God, I want you to help me do what you want more than what I want. Just help me lay my life down so that you, the verse that I misquoted earlier, let me decrease so that you will increase. 